I'm delighted to be here. Thank you very much for uh, organizing this, uh, this panel. I think it's a great opportunity to, to dialogue. Uh, for those of you who don't know what ICC is, uh, the International uh, Chamber of Commerce was created back in 1919. And we are present in over 130 countries, and we have about 90 national committees. And what it means, the reason I mentioned that is that we are a very diverse community of businesses multi-sectoral, multi-country, and uh, we, of course, because of this diversity, have diverse views, which in a way is a f formidable wealth of input and experience, but at the same time can also create some complexity in reaching common positions, and that's, of course, something that we, uh, we work very hard on. And uh, I might add also that we have a very strong and constructive and, and uh, and uh, appreciated uh, interaction with a lot of UN agencies. So that's a very important uh, part of our uh, activity. The Green Imperative, which is the title of this session. Well, let me say that I don't think it's a new concept. It, I don't think it's a new request if you just take these two words, we need a, you know, the Green Imperative. This has been on the, on the table for quite some time and some progress has been made towards that objective of a green uh, imperative, but very, very slow progress. So what has this recent crisis changed? Uh, first of all, it has uh, highlighted the need for more collaboration, that's one. Highlighted the need for more transparency. Highlighted the need for more accountability. And highlighted the need, last but not least, for more tangible and more visible economic output or economic deliveries, including jobs. So once you've said that, you say, well, okay, okay so we continue you know, to work on those issues. No, because this crisis has also highlighted the need to accelerate all that. We need to go even faster than one, what was envisaged before. Just when I mentioned the need for more collaboration, I just, we, we don't have time in a few minutes to detail everything, but just a few areas where, especially this year, which is more or less a climate change year, I mean, it was a water year until recently with the Water Forum, but it's also very much a climate change year, and uh, some areas that all of you have probably picked up from the recent discussions leading to the Copenhagen conference, one is uh, clearly uh, technological collaboration. That's key. Some call it technological transfer, I personally and we in ICC don't like the word technological transfer because it has a sound of immediacy. So, you know, you take something on the shelf and you transfer it and boom, that's done. No, we prefer the, the concept of a technological collaboration which involves a long-term relationship, a lot of capacity building, a lot of education, which are key enablers to a successful uh, technology uh, transfer. The second area, of course, of collaboration uh, is financial flows and financial mechanisms. Nothing will happen if there is not a stronger collaboration there. Then we hear a lot about adaptation. Adaptation also will have some technological inputs and uh, financial inputs, but it's also an area where we need collaboration. And then, of course, R&D, how to enable innovation through R&D, through deployment. That, that's a very uh, uh, crucial area. So, in this acceleration process, I think that acceleration means nothing if you don't break down to sub-levels. So, sub-levels, I mean the corporate level, the company level, the national level, the regional level, level when it comes to uh, uh, schemes such as the European one, uh, or some scheme, regional schemes in the US and, and elsewhere, and the international level. And uh, really, uh, uh, I think that coming back to Claude's initial question, do we need breakthroughs? I would say yes, but they can be different at each one of those levels. The breakthroughs that you're expecting from companies are not the same as the, the ones that you would expect from a regional level, from the policymakers, from an international level, etc. We have had some very good examples of what some companies or some sectors do. I'm not going to repeat that in the ICC uh, commission that I have the pleasure to chair. We have dozens of examples from coming from various sectors, uh, and I think that the business should be more uh, visible about those examples of good and successful collaboration. But let me say also 
that we in the business community, we also expect breakthrough from governments. We expect that uh, a breakthrough in 2009 will be a successful Copenhagen conference. And that's very important. Be why? Because it will impact the carbon market, it will impact the, 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 the fact that there will be a visibility, a stability of the, of the, uh, the need for a carbon market, so that's, uh, that's very uh, important. Uh, it will uh, also uh, impact the energy investments with this predictability and stability that is uh, lacking at the moment. I'm not saying, by the way, that Copenhagen will resolve everything at once, but it will pave the way for more clarity and more predictability there. And uh, so I think that really uh, I, I, we are happy uh, in, the U, in the ICC to, to continue to make more visible what, what the, company, the company actions are, not forgetting about the supply chain and small and medium enterprises and how to deploy those best practices at all levels, including, of course, in developing countries. So we are committed to work on that, but uh, let's not forget that we need also breakthroughs at a policy level and at government's action level. So that's very important. And so I'm, I'm, I'll finish there. Just one little anecdote, uh, Claude, if you allow me, on, on, uh, on collaborative action that uh, uh, was raised in my mind listening to the radio this morning. Um, apparently, from a, a very early uh, uh, comment on the radio this morning, there is this new swimming costume that has just been out on the market. It's a fantastic revolutionary costume for the racers, for the swimmers, uh, a sort of James Bond type, uh, you know, second skin type uh, costume. And as soon as it is on the market, there is controversy about it. You know, who should be allowed to wear it? Uh, is all, are all the racers from all countries able to use the same, uh, the same costume for swimming, etc.? So there's a controversy. And a lot of those uh, swimmers were interviewed by the journalists to, to, to try and get what they, they thought about it. And one swimmer got really fed up with all those questions and said, look, I've made a test. I've thrown the costume in the swimming pool and surprise, it did not swim by itself. 